I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. I'm happy tonight to introduce Sherry Wallace. Sherry's uh, actually a convert to the church, and we're happy to have you come and share your story with us. Thank you. How old were you when you were converted to the church? I was 15, sort of. Yeah, um, yeah it's kind of an interesting story because I, I was a Christian first. Okay. Um, from when I was a child, I went to church with my grandmother and sang in the choir with her and um, in the first Christian church. And then I was, uh, my foster parents were Christians as well. And I stayed with them until I was 15. Oh. And so um, at 15, I moved back in with my mom. Okay. And um, I hadn't had contact with her since I was nine, so okay. it was a big adjustment. And while I thought I was really strong in God and was ready for this, um, there were some things going on in the household that she needed God. She just yeah. did. And she she had him, I guess, to some level, but it was um, it was interesting. Yeah, were the missionaries come by, or how um, did that happen? My mom was invited to a family home evening with oh. um, the two younger brothers that I have. They're uh, 9 and 11 years younger than I am. Yeah. And uh, the babysitter was LDS. Oh. And so we were invited to family home evening and then to the, have the missionaries come over. And of course the uh, film was Family is Forever. Yeah. Families are Forever. That was the film. <laughs> and um, my mom and I just getting reacquainted with each other and um, wanting, you know, that connection that we hadn't had. That was huge yeah. for us. And um, Having been in foster care, it was huge for me. The concept of family has always been really huge for me. Sure. And so... And families are forever kind of thing added to that, I'm sure. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so um, it was a big deal, you know. And so the missionaries came over and they talked with us and, it, and they encouraged us to read the Book of Mormon. And it was really interesting because... Um, I had been told that the Book of Mormon was just evil and that I was going to hell if I ever even touched it. In the Christian, in the Christian church, church. you've been told that. Yeah. I had been told that. And, um, and I thought, well, you know, when they opened it and, they, and it talked about Jesus, I thought, well, anything that talked about Jesus can't be as evil as they said yeah. it was. Yeah. And I read through the Book of Mormon and we talked with the missionaries for a long time and I couldn't prove it wrong. <laughs> I couldn't prove it right, but I couldn't yeah. prove it wrong either. Yeah. And um, they said, well, if you pray about it, you'll know. And I prayed about it and I just, for the first time in my life, I just didn't really get anything. Really? But I was like, well, I didn't really get anything, so it must not be wrong. It Are they saying, okay. did they say that, well, it, you need to pray harder or read more or was it just? It was just. If you're what, not getting an answer. You know, if you're not getting an answer, I think there was a, there was a lot of meetings that we had and a lot yeah. about, um, you know, praying. My mom got her answer right away, and it was life-changing for my mom. Um, the things that she stopped and the things she began to do, and she really picked up that role of being a mom. And I watched that transformation for her, and I thought, okay. This has got to be good. Th this is good. And it was yeah. immediate for her, and more as a support for her, and not because I thought a whole lot about it. I think I got baptized into the church with her yeah. at 15. Yeah. Um, I was in the church for about a year and a half, and I met my first husband, and we were civilly married. 
um, outside of the church. He wasn't a member, and I okay. really didn't believe or disbelieve anything. But, but at the time when I was in the church as a youth, um, immediately I was recognized as a leader and somebody that could bring other people to God himself, and I was put in as the Laurel president. Wow. I mean, that quickly is a convert, and I yeah. was like, why do you want me to lead you? <laughs> you know, I'm just learning about this. But, you know, for me it was always about God, and everything was always about Him, and it was always focused on Him and about my Savior. Have you learned that as a Christian then before age 15? I had. Um, he, Jesus was my best friend. I mean, going through what before, I went through in foster before care. Before 15, you mean? Oh, yes. Oh, before gosh. 15, Jesus was my very best friend. I talked to Him every day, and I read my scriptures, my Bible all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was, I just had that personal relationship with Him. God, and God was my dad. Um, he was my dad. There was what it says in the Bible, isn't it? Yeah, Abba Father. And, and and he was he was he was my dad. I didn't have um, that as a relationship. Instead of looking to other men who I had learned in the world, I couldn't really trust. Yeah. In my personal experience. Yeah. Um, I just looked to God, who always did it right. Wow. You know, he always did it right. No matter what happened in my life, he was always there for me, and he never let me down. Yeah. And. Um, I think that may have been the hardest part of this whole journey, to be <laughs> honest. Really? Um, because that was my relationship with God, and that I never lost. Wow. Along even, the as a, even, even as, as a Mormon. Even as a Mormon, I never lost that. I felt like I was always really close to Him. I was always praying, and I was always yeah. asking for His guidance, and I would always be on my knees and say, you know, what do you want me to do? Wow. What's next? Trusting um, in Him. And people looked at me a little odd, you know, <laughs> when I would pray, they're like, you pray differently. You know, um, even That's years right. into the LDS church, but he still prayed differently. He still you, prayed differently because it was personal. Yeah. Now your first husband eventually joins the church. Then My I first husband joined the church. Um, and c the concept of this eternal marriage, yeah. and and this and that's always had always been my focus. Right. What brought me back to the church, um, to backtrack just a hair, um, I hadn't been in the church for um, almost two years. And at 19, I got married at 17. At 19, I gave birth to my first son. Okay. He was way early, and he was in NICU. And um, I spent six weeks with him in the hospital wow. and just loving this baby. And what a miracle. And I promised God that I would never let anything happen to him and that I would always make sure that he knew who God was. Wow. And I did that with my other children. I have, I gave birth to six others. I have seven children because um, when Amazing. I got married again, <laughs> I got an extra one who was, he's mine. And so I have seven beautiful angels and yeah. I promised as each one of them came into my life, whether by birth or otherwise, that God would always be a part of their life, wow. that I wanted them to know him and intimately. And so that was what I did with this first one. and. Um, it was just, I knew that the church taught about yeah. eternal families, but that's about all I knew. But I had already been baptized, so I didn't have to go through baptism again. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm just going to go back to church. And so I did. And with that and, um, and, and the baby and all of that, my, hu my husband at the time, my first husband, said, um, you know, okay. And basically, that's how he came he in. Got he got into the church. Pretty much, yeah. The, yeah. He just said, okay. <laughs> and, 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 um, and this is what happened. And so, I mean, there's more to it than that, but we just don't sure. have time to go into all the details. Um, but you do eventually get married, sealed in the temple. We were sealed in the temple. Okay. Um, and it was different. It was, it was different. The temple, yeah. yeah, it was different. But I was like, well, if this is what it takes to be an eternal family, <laughs> awesome, let's go. Let's do it. Um, and so, and that was kind of always my thing. It's about, it was always about returning to God. It was always about being with Him. It was always about yeah. being with my family. Um, because that's what I wanted, you sure. know, more than anything, I wanted that family because I hadn't had it. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, all right. Um, and life happens, long story short. And after nine years of marriage, it dissolved. Oh, and it and it just wasn't um, it just didn't work. And how many children at this five. point? Five. Five. Wow. Five children later, because that's what you do. You have babies, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, lots and lots of babies. And you're active in the church. Active, this whole very time. active in the church. I had been young women's um, not president, but in the first count, a first counselor in the young women's presidency, a uh, second counselor in the young women's presidency. I've been in the Relief Society presidency twice as both the first and second counselor, and as homemaking leader. Wow. They called it at the time. Yeah. And uh, just serve because, you know, the more you serve, the better your family's going to be. And you just sure. do it all right. And your families, they're going to know God, of course, yeah. right? And um, all of a sudden, it just wasn't working out. All these promises that were supposed to, you know, if you live faithfully and you do all these things, and my world was crumbling around me. Doesn't and, seem to fit, it was hard. does it? No, yeah. and I thought, well, 
it must be because somebody wasn't being faithful enough. Somebody wasn't doing their job well enough, right? That, that's, how, that's what it has to be. Um, so guilt kind of sets in. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. And as you talk to people, they just didn't want to talk about it. What I noticed is that um, I was the one in the relationship that finally left and said, I, I can't do this. This isn't, um, this isn't God-like and this isn't what God put in place. <laughs> And uh, that was after three days of fasting and prayer and a lot because I knew what the Bible had said about about divorce. Yeah. And um, it was really a hard situation. I probably the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Wow. Probably the very hardest thing I ever did was to decide to to do that, to go through that, because I knew what my children would go through, and I knew. And this eternal um, family and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I knew what I was giving up. Yeah. But I knew that I had permission from God to do it because I couldn't do it until I got that go from Him. Yeah. And um, I don't think I've ever even, I don't know if I've even told my <laughs> husband all the details of that. Wow. Um, so I did. And once I, once I had the go from Him, it's like anything else. When I've ever gotten the go from God, I just don't go back. You That's just, just trust it. Yeah. Because He knows. He knows the path. He sees things I can't see. And so I did, and it was really hard, and it was really tough, and I didn't do it perfectly, and I didn't do it beautifully necessarily even. Yeah. Um, all of it said and done, um, by the time it was over, I was disfellowshipped from the church. Oh. And I was like, well, okay, so what do you gotta do? You know, I gotta have this eternal family concept back, and I was told, well, you can get it back, and this is how. Go through you know, you're, you're gonna go through this process and, <coughs> and everything else, and uh, in the process, I, I have my current husband who is just an angel in, in every form and a darling and, and I just 10 wonderful years with him now later yeah. I can say I love him more now, now than I did LDS then. He point? was um, not, he was inactive LDS at oh. the point. But that's not bad because inactive LDS can always be activated again, right? That's right. And so um, <laughs> that's what I did. I said, you know, you need to get, you need to get yourself right and you, yeah. need to, you need to come back to the church if you want to be with me. Yeah. I, I need an eternal marriage and I need an eternal family and my family deserves that and he agreed and got ready and, got ready and did it and it was great and we spent seven years doing that and it was fabulous and um, and you were active we were so oh, we got accused of being overactive we went to every meeting and we were at everything and our children were in scouts and we served in multiple callings sometimes two apiece and wow. um, our children were, yeah, in the presidencies of their youth groups, and I mean, extremely, extremely active. I went to the temple regularly. As a matter of fact, I went to the temple without him sometimes, just because <laughs> I really liked to go to the temple. Yeah. Uh, it was a great place to go and have some solitude, a uh, quiet place to be with my kids. Yeah. Or away from my uh, kids away and to hear from God. Kids and, yeah, close to um, God. Especially so when you can't even go to the bathroom without having somebody knock on the door and need something. So it was a great place. I loved the celestial room, you know, because yeah. it was quiet. Um, but I learned one day that um, I was rushing through the ordinances and the things in the temple, not really paying attention to them at all. I really didn't care about that part. I cared about that celestial room right. so that I could just commune quietly with him one on one. And um, and I thought, hmm. Because you'd always had this relationship with God. I had, and with that yeah. many children. Now there are seven at this point yeah. in the household. Um, seven children, and um, <laughs> they range, you know, they're, they're within nine years of each other, and they always needed something. And uh, so I loved that room because I could be quiet and nobody yeah. bothered me and I could stay there as long as I wanted and just talk with him and it was yeah. great. And so um, I realized that's probably not right. If I need these ordinances to get to him in the first place, I should probably be paying a little more attention to what's going on. And between that and just one day, um, Again, I explained to you, the bathroom is the only other quiet, sacred place in the household. I'm taking a shower, and the Lord says to me one day, um, where are you? And I was like, what, huh? <laughs> and, and it wasn't an audible voice. I don't, it, it, it was just a pricking in my heart. And it was um, as I was getting ready to go to the temple, actually, one day, and um, I, I missed Jesus. And I thought that's really dumb because he's we, we we talk about Jesus all the time in the church, right? And uh, I was like that. I just kind of was like whatever, you know. I didn't think much about it. And then I went to the temple that day, and and in the celestial room, it was the same thing. What about Jesus? Wow. And I was like, well, he's my best friend. He's my brother. He's he's like your brother, really. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> 
well, he's my savior. And I'm adopted into the family, so we're like family, mm. right? And mm. he's like, is that what the church teaches? <laughs> well, I was, pretty, I was pretty much in despair because I had realized for about two years at that point that I taught to my children about Jesus, especially at Christmas and especially at Easter. We always read the stories, and yeah. I, having that close relationship, always bawled and cried, and I couldn't understand why my kids would look at me like, whatever, Mom, we don't, yeah. I we're mean, not, we're not getting that. <laughs> they didn't. They weren't getting it. I couldn't figure out why. And so, this prior to the pricking of my heart, I had spent two years in prayer, um, asking them why they weren't getting it, and saying, you know, I promised them to you. I've given them to you. Yeah. Why do they not understand? Why does my husband, even though we talk and it's like we're talking the same language, it's like there's something not right. Hmm. And I couldn't figure it out. And um, and I had this, I did, I had a lot of despair about why I wasn't reaching my family, of all people, why they weren't seeming to understand. Who this Jesus was. Who Jesus yeah. was and why. I was so emotional when I would talk about him because that, there's just not anybody better than him. He's all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I just couldn't understand. Did you ever come up with an answer? I did, it, and it was with the pricking of my heart, where yeah. he said, yeah, where, where is he? Where are you? And I used to be in his arms. <laughs> That's where I sat, and now I wasn't. And there was this distance, but I didn't really understand why. And um, a, 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 the best way to explain it is I just said, you know, I'm not just gonna pray to God, I'm gonna pray to God, because I believe God's my father and he's my dad, but I'm also gonna pray to Jesus. Sometimes I'm just gonna pray to him, and. I, no, that's not an odious thing, and yeah, I didn't really understand yeah, all. The, yeah. I didn't really understand all the details of it, but I didn't care. Yeah. Because when I talked to my LDS friends about it, they they just looked at me. I don't know. It was weird. It was like they didn't understand, and it was almost like we were always talking a different language. And um, well, I know, being in the church those 64 years I was in there, I didn't know Jesus. I thought I did. I thought I knew the Book of Mormon Jesus. I thought I knew the Bible Jesus. But coming out into Christianity and realizing who God, who Jesus really is and what he did for me, it is a totally different Jesus. And I don't think the LDS, as blind as they are, will, will really ever understand that unless they're... What do you think it would take for them to realize that? I don't know. I think... I don't... I do know. <laughs> it's having a personal relationship with him. It's always about that. And if I have to choose a personal relationship over a religion, personal relationship wins every time yeah. and that's what it was and I hadn't realized at the time how far I was from him you were almost drawing away from I him. was I was realize without realizing it I was running away wow. by being part of the LDS church and I wow that's really kind of <laughs> hard to say but I was and I I thought you know it was almost this tug of war with my heart yeah. of where it belonged and um I, I didn't understand all the details or what it would mean at the time, but probably about a year, a good solid year from that time where my heart was pricked till my husband and I sat down and had the conversation. I was really like, you know, it's about Jesus, it's about God, it's about this and everything else is just stuff. Yeah. It really is just stuff. I don't really care about the rest of it. <laughs> I just need to focus it's in on religion. that. <laughs> I just, I don't know what religion is right or wrong. I don't care about the rest of it. I just need to focus in on that. And then my oldest son came to me and he said, Mom, I want to start looking at other churches. Out of the blue? Yep. Or and I said, Have okay. you been talking to him? Or? No, but we had always talked to him about being open, about um, being kind to everybody regardless yeah. of what they believed. Again, I grew up in Christianity and sure. it didn't matter what you believed you were just good to everybody that's the way Jesus was yeah. and he loved everybody yeah. and that's how I taught my kids so you went with him wanted to see what he was gonna going to hear I suppose I did yeah. I want to make sure he wasn't being led astray as yeah. a good LDS mom yeah. and my LDS leader said no you can't do that and I said I'm serving faithfully I'm yeah. doing all the things I'm, um, I'm going yeah. I'm going with my son to make sure he's okay yeah. and they basically told him he was going to hell um, that he shouldn't do that, he shouldn't look into it, he was going to hell, that anyone who wasn't LDS was going to hell. Yeah, and I, part of the only true church. And I almost vomited. <laughs> I really did. I, I was so ill. I was like, I don't believe that. 
And that was probably the first time that there was no question in my mind that I wasn't LDS. Um, I was sitting in a church pew. Wow. <laughs> um, we went to a church, with my, I went with my son, and all of a sudden this freeing peace came over me that I had remembered as a child, and I thought, oh, I've really been far away. <laughs> oh no. And I thought, mm, okay, this is concerning, yeah. but I still couldn't let go of the family peace. Yeah. I didn't, I thought, if I leave the LDS church, my family, what about my kids? What about my marriage? What about my, this is my second marriage. I cannot mess this up. I, and I love him and he's such a good man. And he was a blessing. He was a gift from God himself. Yeah. And I knew that and I was like, I don't, I can't do this without knowing 100%. I have to be able to prove the temple wrong. And I have to be able to prove that eternal marriage isn't, isn't what it says it is for me. And, um, and I have to be able to tell my husband. So we got in a car one day because we looked at each other in the, in the kitchen and we, it had been different between us for a little bit, which is weird because we, like I said, are very close. Mm -hmm. And um, probably me pulling away more than anything, but I just was like, we've got to talk. And he was like, yeah, we've got to talk. And I was like, okay, he <laughs> knows. <laughs> I, and I'm an open book. I mean, I can, you pretty much can read whatever I'm thinking. He, he's very good at that. Um, so he's thinking. So I'm thinking. Well, I'm thinking he's he already knows, and I'm. It's <laughs> not going to go well. Um, we get to the park, and we park, and we we're talking, um, just chit chatting back and forth, and we both get really silent. And I'm like, "Who's going to go first? <laughs> and he just starts telling me. He's like, "I have questions about the church. I don't think I believe some of it." And I'm like, "What?" That must must have blown you away. It did. I was like, "I don't know that I agree with everything or believe it either." And so. What a tender moment where God proves that he's just bigger because that's what I needed. I couldn't, had I come out and then he followed me, or I, or Would've he had come out, or right, or he had come out and I had followed him, but yeah. the Lord on his own in different ways spoke to us each individually and brought, you and to brought us together. And then we we're like, and now what about our kids? Oh boy. What do we do? Yeah. Um, but yeah, all of them just came out. Now he was ready to go that night. He was like, I'm ready, let's go. He was. Um, he was. He was doctrinally, he already knew, and I still yeah. was, I still had to disprove the temple. Well, I knew you'd had some questions about men becoming gods, yeah. and then you started a Bible study that helped you with the temple question, right? It was. I had, I had questions about these things, but the one that absolutely had to disprove was the temple yeah. situation, the need for the temple. Yeah and um, went to the Christian church. And we, at this time we were going to the Christian church and the LDS church taking turns week by week because he wasn't gonna be the one to push me over the edge and say absolutely. I'm like, we have to make sure. It's a, yeah. it's a matter of eternal things. We have to be sure about this. And uh, very patient and kind my husband is yeah. um, waiting. And he said, okay. And we went to um, um, Christian Life Center yeah. um, in job, or Sorry, not Joplin. We're from Joplin, Missouri originally. Um, Clearfield. From Clearfield. Um, and they originally we had met them because of the storm that happened in Joplin. And mm -hmm. we had sent some things when we were LDS through through Joplin, Missouri, um, tornado that had gone through. Anyways, that's how we got acquainted with them and decided there first. Um, we went to a Bible study there and, you know, we're so used to the men go to their thing, the women go to their thing, yeah. natural for us to him go to the men's Bible study. I went to the women's Bible study. It was great. Yeah. Um, the first night there, they're, st they're talking about Ruth. They're at the very last day of talking about Ruth. Well, I love Ruth. I knew Ruth from my childhood. I was like, yes, Ruth. I love Ruth. Leave your people. Go with God's people. It's all good, right? And uh, I was like, okay, is that a sign? <laughs> <laughs> and it was. It was kind of his tender way, God's tender mercies of saying, yeah. "Here you go." How sweet. You know, you need to you need to do this at least for a time. You're not yeah. going to hell because you're studying out these other things. Regardless of what you've been told, you're going to be okay. And the next month or the next week, they were going to start the um, book on Nehemiah. And I was really excited about that. I was like Nehemiah, and it was about temples and the old the Old Testament temple. And I was like, there, see, this is perfect. God knows me and he knows what we need. And it's either gonna prove it or disprove it. Yeah. One way or the other, and it did. As we went through, um, we went through several weeks. It was like, I wanna say six 
might have been 10 weeks study. And you learned course. the real purpose of temple. So. I understood what the temple was, and I understood Nehemiah's heart for the temple and how much yeah. he loved it. And I thought, I can connect with him. We're kindred spirits again, just like Ruth. I'm kindred with this one, you know. Um, I helped you answer that final question about it the did. temples. There was the part where the Savior came and something hit me that had just, I knew it, but it just didn't dawn on me before. And um, it was, I just started crying. Um, they talked about when, when Christ died on the cross and the temple curtain was torn in twain. I never understood that. It was torn in two. And I went home and I talked to my husband. And I said, it was torn in two. And he goes, yeah, and the LDS teched it back up. And you have to go do this and this and this to get through it. And I'm like, Something's yeah, that's there. not okay. And yeah. all of a sudden, this love that I had had for the temple made me sick and nauseated. Oh, no. And I was like, yeah, I can't go back there. I don't want to be there. I can't. I knew what it undid. The whole purpose it denied of the what my Savior did. Yeah. It denied what he did. The very the existence sacrifice. of the temple denied what my Savior did for me, and I could never, and I'm like, no wonder I fell so far from you. Oh. No wonder I felt this tug of war in my heart. Sherry, we're almost out of time. What do you say to the LDS people, your family and friends? And I would those say that you don't love? ever, ever, ever trade your relationship with Jesus Christ for anything else, for any religion. Yeah. And I would say, um, as far as eternal marriage goes, if you think that, um, there are, if you agree that there are three degrees of glory, and I'm, I'm going to say, what if you're right? What if you're right? Any place that's not the celestial kingdom would be hell to me. Yeah. Then if you get the celestial kingdom, you still then be, have become a god in your own rights according to the LDS belief system, yeah. at which point you create your own world and you're still not with God. That yeah, in and of itself, yeah. that in and of itself, is not what I wanted. Mm. I need my God. I need my Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said there's no marriage in heaven given. given Our marriage is to Him. Yeah. And He's I've our, prepared myself to be His bride. His bride. Oh, Sherry, what a wonderful story. And I know there's so much that uh, more you could have shared, but you have a wonderful spirit and a wonderful testimony, a witness of, of Christ. And I appreciate you sharing. Thanks Thank so you. much. I appreciate it. We appreciate you watching tonight. I hope you learned something. See you next week. Good night.